Okay, so Pi News episode 46. I've just received this in the post. I'll be reviewing it next year. Uh, this Pi News will be the last video of this year, so let's skip into it. Okay, so first up is from the Magpie magazine, and uh, this is a cool add-on for a Raspberry Pi 400. So there's a couple of things the Raspberry Pi 400 is missing. Uh, it only has three USB sockets instead of the four that you get on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, but also it doesn't have a headphone jack, so the only way you can get audio out of it, well there's a few ways, there's USB audio, uh, there's Bluetooth audio and also HDMI audio, but it's nice to have 3.5mm audio, especially for some portable speakers and things like that, it's just a really useful thing to have. So if we scroll down through, while well, Raspberry Pi 400 has an array of ports at the rear, one notable omission is the dedicated socket for audio output. The DackBerry 400S is designed to address this while offering a mic input via the same gold-plated 3.5mm socket. And DackBerry make really decent quality DACs for the Pi, so uh, you know the audio quality will be really nice on this as well. And they gave it an 8 out of 10. Next up from Facebook, uh, so if you're interested in using Pi Hole, uh, the interface has changed and this is the new interface, so it definitely looks very, very nice. Right, another Facebook story. So this was in the Supreme Retro Pi group and uh, command and conquer generals on the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig uh, using RetroPie and Wine. And uh, I'm a big fan of command and conquer games. Uh, the generals one I didn't have. I was It was more the older games than that. But uh, yeah, this is definitely worth trying out. And it looks like it runs pretty well. So, uh, you know, all, certainly all the intro scenes and everything and within the video, uh, it does seem that the gameplay moves around pretty well. I don't know how well it handles when lots of things are going on but uh, overall I thought it looked pretty smooth, all the scrolling around and everything. Now I'm a big fan of passive cooling and uh, I especially like the DeSalvo aluminium cases and there's a new aluminium case. And this is a very minimal design, but I really like the look of it. So this was on Tindy, uh, it showed up in my Google News Feeds and uh, you can see that it's a, a very sleek looking aluminium case. Uh, you can see some bolts going down there to the underside so it kind of almost completely encases the Pi but leaves the USB sockets and the Ethernet sockets. You've still got access to the GPIO pins there as well. So it talks here about keeping things safe. So this metallic enclosure from Applied SBC looks especially beautiful and highly functional. Machine made out of 6061 aluminium, then nickel plated. Top section sits below the top of the USB and Ethernet ports, presenting an extremely slim package that is tough and durable. So camera and monitor connectors are exposed via slots on the top. And you can see it acts as uh, a heat spreader. So the top bit here looks like there's um, a sticky pad that you add to the CPU. Um, so a bit like the Pi 400. And to be fair, the Pi 400 is very effective. It won't be as effective as the uh, DeSalvo Phineas case, but uh, it is a really nice minimal design and I really like the look of it. I like this story in Tom's hardware. Raspberry Pi 02W makes label printer air print compatible. You can see the label printer in the picture and you can, uh, if you look closely, you can see there's a Raspberry Pi 02W connected up to it. Uh, so air print is a way of printing from an iPad or an iPhone and uh, it's a super reliable service. If ever my, I've got an HP air print printer, if ever the Windows computers aren't printing, I just go to my iPad and it works every single time. Now, it does say in this story you could use a Pi 0W for this because it's not particularly intensive, and the Pi 02W is super powerful, as I've shown in some of my videos. The emulation is brilliant on it. But more of the details are uh, in the bottom here. So the Pi 02W is running Raspberry Pi OS along with an application called Cups, allowing the printer to be accessed by almost any device using Wi-Fi. In addition, uh, they have a guide uh, where you can set up a Raspberry Pi print server. If you've got another printer you want to be able to use uh, that's not wireless, that would come in handy. The Magpie magazine again did uh, a story on Bullseye. This was 13 days ago now. Um, but uh, there's lots of information on there. So if you're using Bullseye uh, and talking about upgrading from Buster, there's lots of different information in here. Now I haven't really gone back to Bullseye recently, but I do intend to do it pretty soon uh, because it's getting updates all the time. But yeah, lots of, lots of useful information in here. So I'll put a link in the description to that story. Really great story here from the Raspberry Pi blog. Raspberry Pi computers are speeding to the International Space Station. Uh, and if you have a look at the story, uh, there's some great photos. The, these have been made uh, so that they're suitable for use in the International Space Station. So loads of detail uh, in this article. And uh, just the fact that it can't have any sharp edges or anything that's going to break off or anything like that. It's got to be really, really safe for that environment. And you can see there's these 3D images where it kind of takes it apart and shows you what's inside. 
Looks like a Raspberry Pi 4 in there. And you can see about cooling, I guess that is. There you go, they're talking about testing for sharp edges and things like that. Just a, just a great story, really, really interesting and amazing to see the Pis in space. Cool story here. So they're using a Pi Zero W or a Pi Zero 2W uh, to be able to jailbreak a PS4. So if you want more access to your PS4, have a look at this story. And there's a video here, PS4 Pi Zero USB emulation. I won't play it, but I'll put a link in the description to it. If you're, if you're interested in jailbreaking your PS4 and, uh, and using your Pi to do it, then have a look at this story. A couple of stories uh, about Pi shortages. Online retailers delaying sales of Raspberry Pi 4 model until 2023, thanks to a few good chips getting scarce. Uh, so this is a bit of a worrying one, as I'm hoping to see next year the Pi 5 released. Um, and if there's chip shortages, hopefully that will get sorted out in time. But uh, I'll put a link to the story, and Tom's Hardware did something similar as well. At Pi and Short Supply site claims 52-week wait for 4 gig model. Most vendors are sold out, but you can still find one. In the article, it says the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W are almost always in stock, which is really nice to see because the Pi Zero 2W is amazing. And also the Pi 400 seem to be available as well. And pretty much everything you can run on a Pi 4, you can run on a Pi 400. I'm still more of a fan of the Pi 4, but the Pi 400 is, is a brilliant one, especially if you're planning to use it as your sort of home computer. Next up is another mini computer, which has been... Uh, adapted with a Pi. Incredibly small icons along the bottom here, but a lovely widescreen display and uh, a smart looking keyboard on this old Texas Instruments device. Uh, and if we scroll down through, no working teletypes were harmed in making this. It's running a Pi 4 with Manjaro Plasma. I finished this build for a while now and finally decided to post it here. There's a few more pictures of the build uh, on Hackaday, so we'll click on that link. I ended up changing the parts quite a bit throughout, but ultimately decided on an 8.8 .8 LCD. That can't be 8.8 .8 inch, surely. I suppose it could be 8.8 .8 inch width-wise. And let's have a look at some of the other photos. Uh, so, oh, you can see it's got a, a print side of it there. Oh, it's a separate keyboard, look. so it's like a gaming sort of keyboard with all the LED lights. And then it's gonna get taken apart. Oh yeah, the keyboard's already, oh, I see. So the, yeah, the keys have already been replaced there. And you can see the Pi, is it a Pi 3? It's got a full-size HDMI in there. Yeah, very, very nice. And I keep meaning to say uh, when I do these Pi News videos, if you haven't watched other Pi News videos, uh, there is a playlist of it, and uh, you can go through and see them right from episode one, and uh, you'll get loads of information on there because I've been doing these for quite a while now. I'm not sure how long ago I did Pi News episode one. So 18th of July, 2020 is when I started doing Pi News. So have a look at some of those older episodes because it's really interesting to see how far the Pi has come. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.